Uh, good morning. I'm Arun from Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to present my research work here on compressibility, evolution, compressibility effects on the evolution of mixing layers. This work is done by myself and my advisor, Samin, in collaboration with Process Balaji Srinivas. So the brief outline is I'll first give a brief introduction on mixing layers and what the objective of our study is, brought by the brief introduction, brief uh, details on our numerical scheme, which uh, we are using, and uh, the computational parameters, the domain, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and some preliminary research and the discussion followed. Mixing layers are shear layers with characterized by the velocity difference. They're prevalent in nature, like when two streams merge together, as well as in engineering flows, like what we have inside a aircraft combustion chamber or in jet jet exhaust. So there is this characterized by a velocity u1 and u2 with a difference, can be continuous or non-continuous, but the viscous effects will eventually lead to a continuous interface. When the velocities are higher, or rather the velocity differences are higher, the compressibility effects starts to kick in. And the compressibility effects are quantified by convective Mach number, which is defined in this way, where C1 and C2 are the speed of sound in either streams. Most notable effects of compressibility on the mixing layer, the first one is that the instability is three-dimensional in uh, when the flow is compressible or the mixing layer is compressible. Whereas in an incompressible flow, it is two-dimensional with characterized by the roller structures. And compressibility reduces the sh growth of the shear layer as well as, as far as the turbulence statistics are concerned, the production is reduced by the effects of compressibility. The motivation is behind this work is that most of the analysis till now ha have been either concentrated on the linear regime or on the cell similar regime <coughs> during the late times. We, we are studying the effects, compressibility effects during the transient evolution using our numerical simulations. In particular, we are studying the evolution of turbulence statistics and trying to deduce something from that. The numerical method which we are using is uh, called the gas kinetic scheme. Uh, it is a Boltzmann equation solver which solves for the velocity distribution function f with a classical BGK approximation for the collision term. The advantage of using a Boltzmann solver is that once we solve for one particular variable f, the distribution function can obtain the flow variables, mass, momentum, or energy, or the primitive variables, density, velocity, pressure, or temperature from f itself using the moments of this distribution function. So the scheme is a finite volume scheme where we uh, discretize the domain into finite volume cells like in any other conventional scheme. But the difference is when we compute the fluxes, we use an integral solution of this equation f in terms of an initial distribution f0 and an equilibrium distribution towards which it's driving. And it, we use this f to calculate the fluxes. So this is a typical cell interface. What we are using is a second order BG scheme, which means that uh, we are linearly reconstructing the distribution function in either in each all cells. So here we have a, this represents the initial distribution F0, which is discontinuous. And uh, this is the equilibrium towards which it is driving, G. So this is a non-equilibrium initial conditions, which enables the scheme to capture non, any non-physical phenomena in the flow. However, in this, whatever we are doing, these simulations are in the equilibrium regime, so we are not taking advantage of this. Uh, F this particular nature of the scheme. So the scheme works like this. So we start with, a, at any given time step, we start with the cell average density, momentum, and energy, from which we reconstruct to the cell interface values and using that to describe the initial and uh, equivalent distribution functions. Once we get that, we use the integral solution to get the F, the actual distribution function, which is the function of time. and the fluxes are just like the primitive variables, the corresponding fluxes are also moments of this F, just only that they are one order higher. And once you have the fluxes, just like in any other conventional finite volume scheme, we uh, do a timing integration and upgrade the, sorry, update the cell average values. So the domain which we are using is a cuboid domain of these dimensions, and the flow is in the x directions. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, the velocity varies in the y direction. 
So we are uh, imposing periodic boundary conditions in the x direction, which is a streamwise direction. So we are actually doing a temporal evolution on the mixing layer, not a spatial evolution on the mixing layer, which would require a larger, longer domain and a larger grid size. So in the z spanwise direction also, we have uh, periodic boundary condition and it is stress free in the y direction. The domain is discretized into phi tall by 256 and 128 grid points or rather cells. And the, we initialize the mean flow field with a tan hyperbolic profile. We do the simulations for two values of compressible Mach numbers, convective Mach numbers, which is 0.2, which is in the incompressible regime, and 0.7, where the compressibility effects are significant. The initial Reynolds number, which is based on the moment and thickness, I'll define the moment and thickness in the later stages, is 160, which is same for both the cases. And the medium is air with the characteristic, uh, the pro flow properties as 1.4 for the specific ratio and 0.7 for Randall number. We do the simulations up to a non-dimensional time of 800 for the incompressible case and uh, 1,200 for the compressible case, which are well into the cell similar regime. So the density is initialized uniformly and pressure is also uniform. And for the temperature, we have uh, the Kroko-Bisman relation. And to accelerate transition to turbulence, we give some initial perturbation field. These initial conditions, uh, perturbations are generated using a digital filter method developed by Clean and all, uh, which was originally developed for generating inflow conditions, but later adopted for temporally evolving flows, like in mixing layers, incompressible mixing layers. This method generates a 3D perturbation field based on a prescribed length scale and the Reynolds stress profile. So in our uh, simulations, we give a Reynolds stress profile, which is Gaussian in Y, and uh, the peak values of these Reynolds stresses are specified based on what Pandano and Sarkar obtained in our DNS studies in 2002. The length scale which we use is the vorticity thickness, which is roughly four times the moment and thickness, uh, initial moment and thickness. So these are, this is how the moment and thickness evolves with time. This is the no moment and thickness in, uh, sc scaled by the initial moment and thickness, and this is a non-dimensional time defined this way. So as you can see, there is a significant reduction of growth rate, which is already well known in these cases. And the moment and thickness is defined in this way. So we have a bar quantity, which corresponds to the Reynolds average, causes, uh, average quantity, and the tilde represents the density weighted average. So our flow variables, or not flow variables, the velocities are density weighted average, and the fluctuations from that are used to calculate the turbulence statistics. However, what we are interested is we are studying this region, not the cell similar region. Nevertheless, uh, we compare our cell similar quantities with uh, existing literature. This is the normalized uh, growth rate, cell similar growth rate, normalized with uh, incompressible value against Mach number. So we found uh, this in agreement with the existing empirical curves. This Barron's and Langley's are, these curves are empirically obtained. Uh, qualitatively, this is uh, what we observe at uh, a non-dimensional time of 200. This is for the incompressible case and this is a compressible case. So here we can see the spanway structures or the two-dimensional roller structures still prominent in the flow, which is actually remnants of the linear instability region. But such a, such a pattern may be exiting here, but it's still, uh, it's not as clear as what is there in the incompressible case. So how to study these turbulence statistics which are varying with in time? Apart from that, at any given point of time, the turbulence statistics are a function of phi, or they vary in the transverse direction. So to eliminate the dependence on y, we define an average quantity, capital F, in this way. This, uh, where F can be any turbulence statistics like the Reynolds stress or the kinetic energy or any of the budget quantities. All budget quantities are normalized with delta U cubed by the instantaneous uh, moment and thickness and the Reynolds stress and TK are non initialized with the square of the velocity difference. The first quantity which we studied was the turbulent kinetic energy, and this line is for the, incompressible, the compressible case, and it is significantly lower than, the high, uh, than that in the incompressible case. So what causes this reduction in turbulent kinetic energy? So if you look at the 
trouble in kinetic energy budget. We have the transport terms, the pressure, the, sorry, the protection, dissipation, and this is the pressure dilatation term, and these are the massless fluctuations terms. These two terms actually go to zero in an incompressible case. Even in our simulations for 0.7, these two terms are found to be negligible. So we, in the, here we report only the production and dissipation. So we can see that it is actually the reduction in production of kinetic energy which is responsible for the lower TKA levels. So what causes this reduction in production? We look at the production term. This is how, this is the production term. We don't have any other uh, mean flow gradients. So this is the only term which will be there. And we observe that in our simulations, the mean flow gradients are roughly comparable for incompressible and uh, compressible cases. So it is actually the Reynolds stress term R12 which is contributing to the reduction. We look at the budget of R12. Similar to the TK budget, we have production, dissipation, then the pressure dilatation term and the max flow terms. Again, these two are negligible. The, we investigate only the production and dissipation terms. Once again, we observe that it's a reduction in production which is responsible for lower R12 values. So what is the production term? The production is given by this relation. So this is a transverse fluctuation. So it's a it might be, it has to be, by going by the same arguments, it has to be the reduction in, or the lower levels of R22, which is responsible for a reduction in production here. We, coming to the budget of our transverse fluctuations, here also we have the same terms. And when we take all three components of this, uh, the diagonal components of the Reynolds tensor, we get the TK budget and where we have pi representing the pi dilatation, uh, pressure dilatation, which is, which we observe to be zero in even in the compressible case. However, here we have the production also is zero because we don't have any mean flow gradients responsible for the production in this case. Massless terms are negligible. So what is this pressure strain term doing? So these three terms, the corresponding streamwise and spanwise fluctuations, these three components together becomes the pressure dilatation terms, which is almost zero. So we can write it in this way. So what this represents is that there is production in U square and pi 1 1 is kind of extracting the energy from this component and redistributing into the other two terms. So we have to investigate how this redistribution works in the compressible and incompressible case. So here we have uh, this is a dash lines are for the incompressible case and solely lines for the compressible case. So during the early stages, there is a clear difference here. So it is, which means that the redistribution is less efficient when we go to higher Mach numbers. So the redistribution term is here, or this is the pressure definition of the pressure strain rate term, which is the correlation of the pressure fluctuations and the velocity gradients of the velocity fluctuations. What we observed is that the velocity gradient fluctuations remains largely unchanged, uh, un unchanged by the compressibility effects. They are at the lower scales. It is a reduction in P dash which is responsible for a less effective redistribution here. So it is a kind of a cycle. We have the higher compressibility means a lower uh, pressure fluctuations which results in a less efficient redistribution from U square to V square as well as the W square, but it is a V square which is responsible for the stress production, UV term. So a lower V square means a lower stress production, which means a lower Reynolds stress UV. And a lower UV means, again, a lower total kinetic energy production because all of the TK production happens in this component, which means a lower U square. And again, the redistribution means it's being less effective and effective. So to conclude, summarize what we observed is that the transient evolution during the interim regime is more or less similar to what we observe in the self-similar regime. It's actually the reduced production which is responsible for the lower TK levels and lower turbulence and, and eventually the lower, uh, the slower growth rate of the mixing layer. And it is ultimately due to the less, uh, less efficient redistribution at higher Mach numbers caused by the lower RMS fluctuations of pressure. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you.
Slide 11. Yeah. Yeah, I did only for uh, two compressible maximums. Even these curves are obtained from uh, previous. You mean these two points? Yeah, for that I have to do simulations. I, I have to, yeah, I have to do a simulations for the entire range of uh, Mac numbers. So I, I haven't drawn a curve. It's just points on this. It's so this solid curve is from uh, Baron's empirical relation. Is the test line another simulation or is it experiment? It's based on experiment. It, uh, this Langley's curve is largely based on experiments because this is from the 1970s. Whereas 2006 Baron's empirical curve. So in 2006, it's they have both experiments and simulations taken into account. So actually, we developed this for some future purposes. Uh, in this particular study, we have in the use, we have uh, that's what I told. We have in exploited the what is the non-equilibrium effects are there. Mm -hmm. We have in used that. Thank you.